Hello. Uh, the two of us are starting a level on a side effect or side project or whatever, something which is loosely connected to Wikidata, which is open data. And uh, we are glad to see you here. I'm Alice Wiegand. I'm the project lead for open data in the municipality of Düsseldorf. And this is Knut Hühne, who, who is a student. You may introduce yourself. Um. Yeah, I'm a software developer by day, and in my spare time, I do a lot of work at Code for Germany, which is a community organization that I'll talk a bit about, and we try to build civic tech tools based on open data. Yeah, that's exactly what we need. And so, let's see where we are, and this is doing its own thing. So, if we talk about open government data, this is something where I think the entire world is is much more forward than Europe and especially Germany is. But in Germany, where we both come from and live, this is getting some dynamics because laws are changing. And overall, we have just data which is used, produced, and um, cared and uh, maintained by um, by by government governments which is just a reliable data source and it's of official data with, with a high value and it is sometimes really surprising to see what kind of data there is openly kind of published. So this is, for example, I hope it opens soon. This, for example, is uh, <laughs> it's the measure of radioactivity in kale. And if I think it's surprising. I wonder why is it kale and not red cabbage? And I wonder why is this a fixed date? You know, 20th of November in 2013. And I wonder why is it that far away? What are we doing with radioactivity in kale today? I don't know. So you find a lot of these surprising things when you start to what have I do to do, do you know, when you start to look at open data in Germany. And um, I'm confused with this computer. Oh, yes, thanks. Yeah, and this, this data usually is up to date. Well, it should be, of course, as in all data, we have our gaps there. And overall, if if we just look on the um, on the region I know best, we have uh, we ha we have eighty and six of singular portals with open data within Germany, which is on municipality level, on the country level, on the federal country level, and on state level. And in Austria, it's um, nineteen, and in Switzerland, it's six. And numbers are growing. So, of course, also a question is, why are we all doing the same thing on different places? Um, it doesn't seem to be s that efficient. Not sure, but this is how our world today works. So now I find the right key, thanks. And there are a lot of challenges which we have to uh, face. and. Uh, kind of a huge gap between vision and reality. So after all, I do think there's a huge, you know, kind of um, friendness between open data and Wikidata. It's all about essential data. It is about being as actual or being as up to date as possible. But in the end, we, when you, we look at the open data platforms in mostly Europe, we find incompatible licenses. So usually, um, mainly um, municipalities choose a buy license because they think it would be good to know where this data come from and to be named there. And this is uh, really a crazy thing. I looked at open data portals, and we have a portal in Düsseldorf for two years now. And by design, we 
uh, choose the zero license. And I found that open data in Zurich, okay, it's not Germany, but it's Zurich, and they are doing a lot of cool stuff there as well. And they also use a zero license, but usually municipalities like CC BY licenses, sadly. And another thing we have to face is that, especially in municipalities, this kind of task to publish this internal data on a free and open license, on a platform, wherever, is just given to a person who usually does something else. So it's not, you know, a 100 person task for this, for this person to do, but something to do, you know, with, with all the other things. So overall, I think we can say that, of course, there are, um, there are people who are really doing a great job. Usually we, we don't find that level of expertise on data analysis and data management that we would need to, to really find high quality data within the open data which comes from governances. And I think this is a problem and I realized also that there's a language issue. So if I just think about putting my colleagues into this room, into the session we had just before about data quality, would be problematic to find a common language to figure out how we can start to improve our data quality so that Wikidata data in, um, quality is also improved. Another thing is that we have no standards in in the name of ontologies, in the name of um, how we prepare data. There is a metadata standard, which is great, but this, after all, does not mean that we all do the same thing and that we find the same kind of data just because it is named in the same way. But overall, it's a lot of official data you can get from open data and I'm just, I, I made, a, made an example here which is about street names and usually you find a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, different forms on street names. Some, sometimes something like the Karlsplatz, it's, it's written with a C or with a K or separated. And sometimes this is also uh, developing over the time. And in the end, there's just only one official name of a place or of a street. And it's the municipality to which can give you that name. And this part, like a list of official street names, is something which is regularly published by a lot of municipalities in their open data portals. And I think that at all is a good start to figure out what we can do with this in uh, Wikidata as well. So this is my short introduction and I'm happy to hear about community work with open data. Um, yeah, I thought I would just kind of give a quick introduction from the other side uh, of the movement, from the community side. Um, so as I said, I work in my spare time for an organization called Code for Germany. Uh, we've been running since about five years, where we have labs, that is groups of people that meet once a week, once, uh, some once a month uh, in Germany, in local what we call labs. And we try to build tools that somehow make it easier for people to participate in politics, to get an understanding of the environment around them, to collect data about air pollution. Um, and of course, we'd like to use governmentally provided open data for that, but we've also realized that there's difficulties with that, that sometimes the data isn't there, it's under a difficult license, um, which is kind of how we found our way to Wikidata also, I think. We also happen to meet in Berlin in the offices of Wikimedia Deutschland, uh, so this kind of brought us very close to Wikidata. Um, and I think it's cool to see that we're kind of strengthening the relationship between the Wikidata community in Germany and the Code for Germany community. Um, we also would like to work even closer with the government by talking about bridging gaps. I mean, there's very basic problems such as us meeting after we work and the people for the government wanting to meet when they work, right? 
Um, so I think when we think about how these communities can work together, there's very mundane things such as working times for, yeah, that we need to keep in mind. Um, so just a quick introduction to what we do at Code for Germany, especially with regards to Wikidata. Um, we've had a couple of hackathons now within the last years where people from the Wikidata community and the Code for Germany community kind of came together to meet and to spend a week uh, weekend to work on Wikidata. Uh, and we've done all kinds of different things. Uh, we've usually been very interested in political data, so we've been importing a lot of data regarding uh, politicians and regarding elections. We've thought about how to model election data in Wikidata a lot. And we've also had a lot of people that build games with Wikidata. Um, one of the nice examples for this would be the Wikidata card game where you can put in any Q number and you get a nice trading card game. Uh, you might have seen that. If not, I encourage you to, to look for that. I think that's a really cool way to sell Wikidata to other people. Um, yeah, selling, this is also something that we've re realized when we talk to data providers that often they're quite scared to give data to you um, with the traditional argument of our data is so complicated you won't understand it and you'll build bad applications that will make us look bad. Um, then our strategy usually is to just take the data anyway, uh, build an application, show it to them, and then their response is usually, oh, this is pretty cool, can we link to that from our website? Um, and then at some point, maybe you can start having a discussion with them. Um, but yeah, I think this is kind of what we can do as a community. We can build little small games and tools to showcase, okay, there is Wikidata and it's pretty cool and you have open data and we can build cool things with it, but you'll need to give it to us. You'll need to publish it under a license that we can work with. Um, and this is one of the things that we try to do at Code for Germany, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Because before we open the room for question from you, we would like to just open or ask some questions to you. Um, I think that Knut has really described the challenges we face uh, quite well. But still, I do think there's a lot of opportunities in, in these data, and we just need to kind of harvest it better than we do it right now. And so my questions, and maybe it helps you to a bit to, to, to think about that, is how could we integrate more open government data into Wikidata in a more structured way, just keeping in mind that the people who are kind of providing these data are not that experts you may expect. And at the same time, there's, uh, there's, there already is a wiki project, Open Government Data, and I'm not sure if you, Christina, had opened it quite a while ago. And I wonder in which way we can kind of uh, reanimate it and make uh, yeah the best out of it, because we, we still have this place and uh, we have people who are engaged in the municipalities, in governments, to open up data, and maybe it's it's an opportunity to just match these different languages and expectations. So, yeah, I'm open for any ideas to do that, and I'm happy to engage a bit in that as well. So, questions? Hi, thank you guys. Um, maybe an idea is one we could be taking from the Wikipedia beginnings, where I think it was uh, Matthias Schindler who started with his content liberation army. Um, and the idea that you know you have to really go in and, and, and there's the data is there, but for example, I had a, a project with a student where we were looking at where the trees are located, geolocated in Berlin, and this is sometimes on paper, it's sometimes on a stupid database. We were accused of being terrorists uh, uh, by the people who didn't want to give us the data. We had to get really, really uh, picky about this and point to the laws saying, this is open data and you have to give it to us. Um, that We have to sort of go in friendly, as you were saying, and try and explain to them what they will have from it. Many of them don't see that they have a use of it because it's more work for them having to deal with us. 
I think that's one of the main kind of fears which is there. There are coming people who are just putting more work onto us and at the same time there's so so little understanding that this is just part of what they are doing already. Uh, and that they can can really also, you know, um, learn and get a lot of input from the people who are asking about that data. But this is really culture change, a cultural change, especially here in Germany. So it's work, we are working on it. We are working hard, but it's really kind of a tough thing. Yeah. Maybe I can add. Yes. I think what's also really interesting to see from the community's perspective is that when we talk to different cities, it so depends on who happens to work in the cities. Like we have this very small city of Moers that is very unknown, but if you talk to people in the open data community, everyone will know it because they happen to pay someone to do work on open data. Um, and when I talk to people from the government in Berlin, they tell me, okay, I now know I have to publish open data, but I don't know how for whom or why. Um, and I think this is actually uh, yeah, a chance for the smaller cities to kind of champion this idea because it's so, e so much easier for them to kind of get a movement and to liberate some data where if we talk in Berlin, we always need to talk to 12 districts and they'll never align on what data they want to publish. And we have a remote comment from uh, Beat Easterman who wants to point out uh, he has some links in the Etherpad about uh, interested in open government data help Swiss authorities prioritize based registers and controlled vocabularies. <laughs> and I'm told he just came in when, while I'm reading his Etherpad entry. So if you could just take the mic from me. Okay, thank, thank you. I, um, I missed the first introduction. <laughs> what did you start on? Yeah, Are ah, you reading? Out. Okay, so we're currently running uh, in Switzerland. We're running uh, a survey uh, to kind of prioritize data from within the government uh, that are like base registers or controlled controlled vocabularies because we. We think that they would be crucial to actually promote and boost uh, the publication of linked open data across the public authorities. So we're running a survey to prioritize them and for, the, for some authorities to know which ones to publish now and for others, for the community to know where to put pressure on and how to actually yeah, argue why uh, they should publish it. We're also collecting um, use cases. I posted the link um, to the Etherpad. It's in German and French only, the questionnaire, so I'm sorry we're still not like a five language country, which is a four languages. Uh, yeah, we could switch to English, right? Yeah, so that's one point. And the other point I think is we could now put a bit more love uh, into kind of documenting the whole wiki project, uh, open government data. And that's something we're not really doing if you compare it to, to what, what is going on in GLAM. I think that is definitely something which uh, I probably will try to figure out after, after, after my vacation time, which is starting on Monday. <laughs> uh, uh, there is this wiki project and we, we need to figure out who is interested in it, uh, what can we do there and how can we motivate people from kind of out the Wikidata community to add this important information to that. So I do think there's a huge opportunity um, to figure out how we can include more of this really, really valuable and reliable data into Wikidata. But overall, there's a lot of challenges as well. And still it's kind of a different crowd of people and we need to figure out how to bring them together. Any ideas welcome. Yeah, there's another point which we're currently not focusing on with this 
base registered and vocabulary thing, but what I have had as a request is to be able to actually store tabular data and to be able to pull it because like it does not make sense to put like 200 years of uh, population statistics from Zurich into that uh, Wikidata item for Zurich. This is maybe I just put pick it up and just an anecdote from my day work. So I I started to introduce uh, Wikidata to my colleagues. We are a small team doing open data, and it was it it was fine, and they were really really interested. But in the end, we started to add some of the population dates, and then you know the there isn't any order. So you, it's so hard to figure out if you find a population date for a year Y or X or something and if it is still missing. So there, of course, there are still a lot of things to improve in Wikidata as well and tabular data could be one of it also, yeah. I have a comment on the tabular data. Um, I remember we had also discussions with the Canton and the city of Zurich about this and that it might make sense to start um, discussions on whether we should maybe consider setting up a wiki base uh, for open governmental data and having such kind of uh, data sets and then link them to Wikidata or link them from Wikidata to, to them because mostly um, the linked open data technology is actually enabling that and it's one of the key advantages of this technology. It is of course something that doesn't relate only to OGD data. It's, it's a global debate in the whole uh, Wikidata community because the larger we make the central endpoint or the, the graph, um, the more difficult it is to handle it. I think we all agree on that. So I think there should be a, a deeper conversation and discussion on whether we should start building this network. Well, actually, there is already a network of wiki bases. Uh, we also work in the university with uh, publications and research data with uh, our own uh, wiki base. Um, and, and then another comment about the um, wiki project, so we continued working and documenting uh, the materials uh, of the event. So we actually now we have two upcoming events in November. Uh, we have a full weekend technical training on Wikidata in collaboration with the Open Data Zurich people and the Canton of Zurich and also Wikimedia Switzerland and we have a, a hackathon. But I totally agree that it would be great to start having conversations with all the participants that have been listed already in the project and start more discussions, especially with all the countries that have many good initiatives like Germany, like what you described, and uh, start documenting what are the specific needs of these institutions, what are the problems, and what specific tools we need to develop or procedures that we can help them import or link data in Wikidata. I think we are out of time. One last question. It's a proposal to use Wikibase for that. I'm not sure whether that actually would solve this tabular data problem. Yeah. And when thinking of statistical data, like popu population data, that is not data that we want to really edit. That's data we just want to consume. Exactly. So it means we have to ask ourselves whether we want to build in the capa capability to actually pull data directly from external third-party Sparkle endpoints, and not just from within this Wikibase ecosystem that we're planning to build up as well. So I agree that it doesn't solve the tabular data, but what I was trying to say is that the information that is more specific, it might be the case that we want to export it something else. And I see Wikibase also as a, a very good data modeling um, examples. So if you, not only because you want to have humans editing, but also because the whole data modeling happening in Wikidata with all the qualifiers and references adds a lot uh, to other data sets. So if we would do it from scratch in RDF, uh, 
we would be missing these features that Wikidata has, and I see it as an, uh, an advantage. So that, that was the reason why I, I mentioned that it would be very helpful to maybe think of for the wiki basis around OGD data. So I'm sorry that I think <laughs> we just ran out of time and I encourage you to keep talking with our speakers out in the breaks during all the conference, and please, round of applause for them. <laughs> Thank you.